Bad dreams. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. Thanks for being on our show today. Thanks for having me here. Do you have a lot of bad dreams yourself? Uh, no, not too many. Well, that's good to know. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself so they can get a handle on you. Well, I've been studying um, dreams and psychology now for about 16 years. And uh, I've got a book out called uh, A Course in Astral Travel and Dreams. And uh, one soon to be released called The, the Peace of the Spirit Within. And uh, another one to be released in about four weeks' time called When I Go to Sleep. And uh, I also run online courses in uh, dreams, astral travel, uh, psychology. Um, and these are, these are quite big. They're the, the largest courses of their kind in right. the world. Uh, we've had just over 43,000 people attending these courses, people from all over the world. Really? Yep. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a lot of people there. Now, what's astral travel? Tell me. Astral travel is when you're dreaming, usually, uh, you realize that you're dreaming and you can fly around. That's usually what astral travel is called. Um, if you've heard of near-death experiences, well, everyone's heard of near-death experiences, but um, in near-death experiences, people say they're out of their body, they can move around. Um, in dreams, it's, it's sort of similar, but you can be very much influenced by uh, your mind, your subconscious. And both, both places, if you like, are called the astral world in, I'd say, common um, terminology then for this, this sort of thing mm. that's around today. Um, there's theories as to whether it's another dimension, um, but astral world or astral plane is the most commonly used thing. But there's also like a spiritual plane and things like that that people refer to it as. Now, there have been a lot of studies done on dreams, right? Yes, that's right. And in spite of that, no one really knows why we have them? Nobody really knows why we have them. No one can tell scientifically the reason for dreams. And, and no one can even look into somebody else's dreams. We can only look at a or Science can only look at a person who's dreaming, the body, if you like and measure responses on the body, but you can't actually get into the person's dreams. Dreams then are very much um, an individual, personal thing. Although we all have similar um, events and similar things happen to us in dreams. Now, why do we, uh, why do we have, uh, I guess, good and bad dreams? Or, or do we know why? Is it something that's triggered or does anybody know that? Yeah, there's a direct relationship between what goes on inside our minds, in our lives, and what we dream at night. So, if, for example, you take a really uh, standard test, group of children, and split them up into two, give some a scary movie to watch, the others nothing. The ones with a scary movie are three times more likely to have scary dreams that night than the ones who don't. Um, children um, have a much faster response to a situation um, in terms of dreaming about it the next night than adults because they've got far less impressions of life within them. As we get older, we tend to store these up. And then in our subconscious, we've got all kinds of emotional states, all kinds of images, memories and the like. And then at night, these turn into dreams. So if we're anxious, if we're worried, we can then have dreams about being chased around, for example. And, and isn't that the most common? Being chased or the other one is falling, I guess? Yeah, that's right. Uh, being chased is the most common bad dream. Um, falling is about the third most common bad dream. And teeth falling out, surprisingly, is, is uh, just a little bit more common than that. Teeth falling out. Teeth falling out, yes. <laughs> so being chased is number one. It, yeah. Teeth falling out, and then the uh, falling would be number three, you said. And then there's things like being trapped or being injured and things like that. And, and um, the recurring dream, that's always been one that's kind of interested me. Yeah, recurring dreams tend to happen 
when there's an event in someone's life they're not coming to terms with or an event which is very powerful. When an event is very powerful, then it has um, a strong effect on the subconscious. So you, you're going to get um, those those states, those images repeating at night in dreams. And they can go on and on as long as those states are as strong and as long as the images don't change. If you can change something about, uh, let's say, a traumatic event, then you can stop that um, that dream recurring. And that could be simply from new impressions of that that sort of event right now sh do we have anything to fear from our dreams well I I think that if if we go into sleep because there's varying degrees of bad dreams there's dreams which are you know well just a little bit unpleasant but then there's these less common horrific dreams you know like proper nightmares yeah. And I think that going to bed with a strong chance of having nightmares is is pretty unpleasant. I'd say there's something to kind of fear from that. Okay. So I would then think that it would be worthwhile looking into what's going on in the day, their strong emotional states, their problems and so on, trying to tackle those problems and and clear those those states in order to get rid of those bad, really nightmarish, unpleasant dreams at night. So can that, can we, can we tie that together with the sleep disorder or if we're, say we, we know or we have a recurring nightmare, we're afraid, actually afraid to go to bed, afraid to go to sleep? Yeah, it's, it's a direct um, result of things that are in the subconscious, which might not be acknowledged. Um, which may just be covered over, oh, it's nothing or whatever. But they're there, and they're coming coming out at, as dreams at night. So it, it's a matter of really looking into and becoming aware of different problems that are going on in the mind, perhaps, different fears, different worries. Like if someone gets really angry, then they're going to have more bad dreams. You know, so... It's it's uh, it's important, I think, to be looking into tackling the day, the daytime, to tackle the night. Hmm. Simply taking a, a pill, you know, which is a lot of a lot of people get. It doesn't get to the root of it. It can it can alter the mind a bit, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem. I think it's better to try to root out the problem. So, can can people most often help themselves? You mentioned, you know, the online course. Can people use a, a tool like that to uh, to help themselves, you know, either cut down on or get rid of bad dreams and nightmares? Yeah, I think it's important to do that because if if you don't know how to look inside and see what's going on, then you won't be able to really root out the problems. Um, that's where I, I feel it's good to do a course of some kind because you, with other people you can talk about it and you can get uh, accurate information that can really bring about change. Um, very often people don't like to talk about <clears throat> dreams. Um, they think, oh, well, it's something that I have, but you know, maybe the other person won't be interested or they'll laugh at me even, you know? So... If you're on a course and everybody on it's doing the same thing and everybody's going to want to talk about their dreams and can talk about different life situations and all that. So I think a course is a really good way to learn about this. All right. Um, we're going to take our next commercial break. And, Mark, what, what are you prepared to offer our listeners today in the, you know, in the way of advice? Or, um, I mean, do you do interpretations of dreams? Uh, what, what, what can uh, we expect this morning? Well, I, I can um, say what some dreams mean, but overall I like to let people learn how to interpret their own dreams. Right. You know, uh, so that they're not totally reliant on somebody else, but they can, they can learn to 
to know what's what's happening in their own dreams and work it out for themselves. I think it's better to like empower people to do that. All right. Uh, my guest has written uh, a number of uh, articles uh, and books, a uh, course in astral travel and dreams being one of them, and uh, we're talking to him today about bad dreams. If you'd like to share one with us this morning or uh, maybe uh, get a couple of hints on how you can get a handle on uh, your uh, bad dreams or nightmares, we'd like to hear from you. 725-2525 is our local line. If you're calling us long distance, use our toll-free number, one 888 2210-880. And as usual, we'll have some information to hand out as well, so uh, have a pen and paper handy, and we'll be back from this break in just a moment. We're back, and again, Mark Pritchard is uh, my guest, a writer of A Course in Astral Travel and Dreams, and uh, the website is uh, gnosticweb.com, and that's G-N-O-S-T-I-C-W-E-B dot com. G-N-O-S-T-I-C-W-E-B dot com. And, and what can people get on the, web, uh, on the website there, Mark? Well, they can get access to a free course in uh, Astral Travel and Dreams and uh, another course in um, Psychology. Um, they last for nine weeks. So every week you get a, a topic and a little exercise to try at home, like uh, remembering your dreams, for example, um, relaxing as you're going to sleep, um, keeping a diary, various um, techniques given week by week so that you gradually build up and uh, learn to get a bit more knowledge on these things. All right, let's take a call here. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, yes, hello. Good morning. Uh, I've had a d- same dream off and on for about the last 30 years. Um, it's all about school. I go to school, can't remember my combination, can't find my room, and I'm always late for class because in high school you go to, a, uh, you're in different classes and different lockers all the time. Right. So about 30 years later, to make it really short, I finally graduated from high school and I've never had the dream since. <laughs> I always wake up in a cold sweat and, uh, you, know, it's, <laughs> you know, it just seemed to last for such a long time, this dream. And that's, uh, you know, do you have any thoughts on why you have that dream? About three like, weeks ago, I talked to a teacher that was probably the most involved in it. She thought it was pretty funny, but yeah. I think it was just maybe skipping school and maybe not being the student you should be is the only so thing I you, can figure out. you weren't the perfect student is what you're saying? Well, uh, no. Paid for it for 30 years. Well, I don't know. I guess so. I, but I don't know. It just seems like an awful long time to have the same recurring dream. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is it a long time to have the same one, uh, Mark? It's a long time, yes. Um, it it would, I think, um, mean that something hadn't changed for quite a while, but uh, the dream has changed now. Have you any idea why that is? Why do you think that dream has changed? Uh, just uh, towards the end of the dream, we had a, went to school with the kids, everything was the same, and then instead of being all this confusion, it was a graduation, and that was the end of it, and I've never had the dream since. So you don't know what might have led to the change? No, it's just just happened i have no idea it's not like there was a job change in life or you know somebody died or it's just pretty much mundane hmm. well there's also a symbolic side to dreams you know you've got all these dream diaries and things like that out today and uh, there's this common symbology which you can pick up through different cultures around the world and um, a classroom in a dream in this this sort of symbolical uh, way represents learning in life. It's like you come to the school of life to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, if you repeat in the same classes, in the same classroom, it means that there's a period of stagnation, a period where things are not moving on in your learning in life. But to graduate means it's a good sign. It means to pass pass your tests, if you like, you know, to move on in, in, in uh, what you're doing. Um, but not necessarily uh, with a, a job, a new job, or a situation like that, but it can mean your own attitude to life. Well, that has definitely changed for sure, yeah. Things are calmed right down in the last few years. Well, there you go. Yeah. Did you get good marks? Uh, 
Uh, sort of. <laughs> there you are. Well, I was just going to say, if you're going to have your own dream of graduation, I'd make myself an honor student if I were you. <laughs> Happy to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling us today. Thank you. All right, bye. Um, is 30 years a long time? Some people... Uh, some people might say that's a t terrific long time. Other people might say, well, I've, I've had one for 50 or 60 years. They can go on for our whole life. Yeah. Um, it, it just depends. Uh, well, some can repeat for a year, then disappear. It, it all depends on the circumstances, really. I've always been intrigued by the fact that, you know, even where I work here, there'll be somebody come in, you know, in the morning and say they had this dream, and they'll go into great detail. Yeah. And, and you know, they remember it like it was a real event. I guess it is a real event for your mind, right? Well, there's, you know, I was saying about this subconscious, which is affecting um, what we dream about. And so we're in this world, if you like, that we create in our dreams. Um, it's like a model that's made up of all the impressions that we've had from life. But sometimes our subconscious has less effect. And the dream, then instead of being murky and gray, like some dreams are, that you can hardly remember them, some dreams then are very clear, like crystal clear. And there, the subconscious is having a much less effect in dimming the event of the dream. Mm -hmm. And so you can see things real as, as though you can just touch everything, and it's, it's almost like a sparkling quality to it. And I think it's really worth paying attention to, to dreams like that, to see if there's anything in it that's, that's telling you something. Anything you think you can learn from, or it's like a message or some something like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any tricks to remembering dreams? Because I'm I'm one who, if I have one, I I don't remember them. Well, an alarm clock is a big obstacle to remembering dreams, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, we rely on it or the radio coming on in the morning when we're waking up, um, because we just jolt it up out of the night's sleep. And uh, it's really difficult to remember a dream like that. So better to kind of gradually wake up? Yeah, it's very difficult to do that. You can, it's possible to train yourself to wake up just before the alarm clock comes on. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, but you can do it. Some people can manage to wake up without an alarm clock. But the, the alarm clock's a bit of a, a nuisance. Because what really, to remember a dream, what you need to do as soon as you wake up, Lie still, completely still. Don't move at all. Right. And then just try and go back over the night's dream. You find, you can catch just like an end of a dream, just a little bit of one. And if you can catch that, you just concentrate on it. You try to visualize it as though you're back in, in that dream. And then you start remembering more. And then the bit more that you can remember then helps you remember more again, and you go through the night like that. You just sort of keep uncovering those dreams. If you move, you lose the thread really easily. Hmm. And another thing you can do is keep a diary by your bedside or not far away. Right. And uh, just write down the night's dreams. And then you'll begin to see patterns emerging in them. So you, you'll see repetitive dreams, perhaps, that you didn't know were, ha were happening. You know, and, and things that you can look back later on and say, oh, I wonder what that meant. And, and as time goes by, you can say, oh, right, I, I understand what that meant, no? So just by chronicling the, uh, the events as you, as you remember them, uh, as you say, patterns may, uh, may evolve and you can uh, do your own work, as you say. That's right. You can begin to see these different patterns and these different um, events taking place. And you now, can locate and spot problem ones like uh, if you this thing of being chased for example if it's repeating too much okay what's going on yeah you, know, you, you can begin to spot those patterns and then you can start to tackle the root cause of them and it and in those cases it could be stress during the day or in your job or in your life any kind of a trigger like that right that's right uh, people in fact 
give stress as the main cause of bad dreams. But there's a lot involved in stress. We've got stress of all kinds. There's a stress of one, one sort or another, all varied. But there, there are some cases of stress which have a powerful impact upon us. Yeah. There are other cases of stress which we may not notice, but they're carrying on underneath. And uh, it's important to spot those and, and to root them out because they, they're keeping us, um, if you like, feeling a bit low. Mm-hmm. And we can't spot that underlying feeling of, of being low, but it's there. And for some people, that can eventually turn into depression, which then has a really big effect on people's lives. All right, let's take another call here. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, how are you this morning? Good, thank you. I'm really enjoying the program. How did you sleep last night? Oh, very well, thank you. I was asleep before my head hit the pillow. There you are. (laughs) Anyway, what I wanted to know, uh, several, several, several years ago, I kept having a dream two or three times, and these events had not occurred at that time, but approximately, oh, within six months, these events did occur. Now... Oh, uh, would you give me some kind of a comment on on uh, on that type of a situation? So the connection between dreams and and something and that s- eventually some- did happen. Okay, was this bad things? Yes, it was. Okay. So can that be our worst fears, Mark? Well, um, do you mean that? Was it like a sort of a premonition? I suppose so. Like, I think we all have, um, or I felt afterwards, that we all must have some kind of a sense that um, you know something's wrong or not right, but you can't put your finger on it, but you don't consciously think about it. But this dream um, happened, well, at, at least three times. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it was more than three. But um, the... Um, the playing out or the um, actual um, happenings in this dream happened approximately six months after that. Yeah, as Bill said, it could be like uh, fears in there. But the and the interesting thing is this event taking place later. You know, um, well, what kind of explanation can we give for that? I I have no idea or whatever, but uh, I have thought of that many times over the years or whatever, and and um, like I do, um, I have studied um, Freud's interpretation of dreams from one end to the other, and I said I have never been able to come up uh, with anything such um, or any explanation for such. But anyway, thank you for your time, and um, I will keep listening and. Uh, Oh, but other people will will phone in as well. Thanks. So, so did you? Before you go, did did you um, have you had anything similar like that happen before or since? No, I haven't. So, just the one event. Just the one event. Yes. And it was almost like you you had a preview of that event through a dream. Um, uh, it's um, if you must know. Well, no, and if you don't want to tell us, don't. But I'm, if you can do it in general terms, that you know, non-identifying, if that's what you're concerned about. But not sure. I thought about that before I phoned or yeah. whatever, and I just thought, how much do I want to reveal? Yeah, well, like I say, if you don't, if you're not comfortable, I'm just, you know, I was just trying to get a handle on on how real it was in your dream, I guess, and how well it matched the actual event. I guess I can ask you that in general. Terms. I would. It would. Uh, bring me out of a sound sleep to thinking that the event was actually going on right then, but it was sort of what we describe as our nightmares. Okay. And uh, once I dispelled that, hey, like I'm, I'm in my bed, this is, uh, this is a bad dream, this is a nightmare, but my goodness sakes, like when you, um, six months later type of thing, when you realize, my God, this, this is not a nightmare anymore, this, I am... I am awake, I am up, I am fully clothed, like this is happening, like you begin to think that, hey, have I I really lost it, you know? Well, it'd be a little scary. Well, it was, it was, but I said I still have never come to any kind of, um, um... You'd like to have somebody that can explain it. I sure would. Yeah. Yeah. And and not that it makes any difference 
now about the situation or whatever. Everything has been uh, resolved or it has taken place. It's history. It's mm-hmm. past. But I would really, truly like to know like, um, just like how the mind does function and how much of that sixth or seventh sense we have of, um, of detecting like all uh, some of these events that um, you know that haven't happened yet. Well, and I'm thinking it's going to make you a little bit nervous the next time you have a a reality type dream again. <laughs> I sleep too sound or <laughs> to have any kind of a reality well, anything. <laughs> that's good. Well, thank you for calling us today. Hey, it sure will. Thanks, Bill. Bye bye. Bye now, uh, Mark. One thing she did say about waking with a jolt or with a start is that I I've had that happen as well. Yeah, I think. Uh, that's because that dream was really strong. Yeah. And so is that a self? Uh, I mean, uh, is that self-defense mechanism kicking in there for the mind that wakes you up like that? Yeah, it it can really be because you know if you have a dream, uh, just ordinary dreams every so often, the body is moving with these dreams. The eyes. Go, it's called the REM sleep. It's, yeah, you you can see if somebody's dreaming, but in waking up from a dream like that, it's so real that it catches you as you're waking up. So you start to move, uh, but you start to move in your dream, but also then because it's it's it woken you up a bit, it's woken your body, so then you just jolt a bit. Hmm. But um, that thing about having a dream come true is very interesting because there's no way that um, science can explain that kind of thing. No way. There's not the technology to do it at the moment. Yeah. At the moment. At the moment. Yeah. All right, we have to take a break. Uh, we'd like to hear from you this morning about... Uh, Bad dreams, dreams, you can call us at 725-2525 or toll-free, 1-888-2210-880. If you'd like more information on, uh, you know, I guess getting a little uh, deeper into your dreams and interpreting them or uh, finding out why they're recurring or anything connected with that, uh, my guest has given us a website that you can visit uh, following the program this morning. It's GnosticWeb.com, and that's G-N-O-S-T-I-C-W-E-B.com and uh, find out a little bit more about that. In the meantime, get on the phone lines. If you're there during uh, our break, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, wait for you if you'll wait for us. So uh, we'll be right back after the break. Well, I think, uh, Mark, we may have wakened some people up here this morning. Our phone lines are packed here. We're going to have to go for, uh, to some calls. Hi, you're on the air. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my mother used to say if she ever dreamt about a white horse that some member of the family would be would die. Yes. You know, she, I, she ever do that? Oh yeah, she was often right on. Really? And I don't know. I for some reason have dreams that terrify me, like wild animals chasing me or something. Yeah. That's that's the number one. Uh, that's the the number one dream you're having there. Yeah. Well. Uh, is that horse got a saddle on it? Well, I... Uh, Did the horse have a saddle on it? I don't remember. No? My mother's been gone for quite a few years. What's the implications of that, Mark? Well, if a horse is seen with a saddle on it, the symbol of, of the death... Oh, yeah. So empty saddle kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, I get real violent when I have these dreams. Really? Yeah. You know? Trying to get away. Yeah. What kind of animals? Oh, it's usually a wolf or something like that. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not afraid of animals at all. Hmm. They come through our yard and coyotes and that. Right. Never bothers me, but I don't understand why I have them stream so bad. Well, and I don't know if there's any comfort in it, but like I say, you're in good company. The... Sorry. Can you say a bit more about those dreams of the animals? Well, they usually they uh, are trying to attack me. That's about all I can remember about it. I get real violent. My wife has to wake me up. She has to holler at me. Oh, really? So you thrash about and all the rest of it? That's right, yeah. And shout. <laughs> oh, and yell. 
usually dreams are something that don't, as far as I was concerned, don't manifest themselves. You forget about them as soon as you wake up. Eh? But these really get me. Hmm. Yep. I do have Parkinson's and I do take a lot of drugs. But So can that sometimes make a difference, Mark? Yes, it can. Yeah. Um, depends on the, the type of drug, so some won't have any effect at all. Ones which alter the consciousness, oh yes, and hallucinogenic sort of things like that, not not your, like yours, they can have a really strong effect and they can cause a lot of bad dreams. I mean, if people go and take um, consciousness altering drugs, they've got to be prepared for a lot of bad dreams, nightmares. Hmm. But yeah. it, it, with animals, uh, these are part of this this symbology that was mentioned earlier. They, they represent sometimes different like um, states within us. Oh, yeah. So you've got like fears, you've got anger, they're like really basic instincts. Right. And at night then they can, they can come out into these situations or be represented by these situations where you've got these animals and, and they're attacking you and things like that and you're trying to run or fight them and all that. But it's, it's emotions in the day strong emotions that are causing it. Oh, yeah. Uh, because that direct symbolic link really makes sense in your in your case. Yeah, well, I, I've really been having them quite often now, certainly every night. Yeah. Have you ever talked to your doctor about the meds you're on? And no, I haven't. You might want to mention that. Yeah, okay. Just check that out. And the good news is they haven't caught you yet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your call today. Hello, you're on feedback. Yes, good morning. Morning. Uh, Yes, I thought this topic sounded quite interesting. Um, I had uh, nightmares, the same nightmare, a different object, for over 30 years. Uh, It started when I was about 14 or 15, and it was a, I used to call it a choking nightmare. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would, well, I say wake up, but yet I wasn't really awake, I guess. I would actually get out of bed. I'm choking on an object. I always knew what the object was in my throat, and it wasn't always the same thing. Hmm. It could be sometimes it could be a coin, sometimes it could be a, a food particle, but it wasn't it wasn't very often that it was a food particle. It was usually other more solid objects. Uh, and, worst, and all of them possible, and all of them capable of of getting in your mouth and choking you, right? Uh, not necessarily. No. Well, I don't know. Uh, one of the worst, uh, I shouldn't say worst, but odd ones was it, there was two toothpicks. Oh, yes. And the toothpicks were side by side, uh, but they were attached together at each end. Oh, yeah. And they were caught uh, not as if going down the throat, but across. Sideways. Sideways, thank you. Like in a vacuum cleaner hose. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Now, the thing is, I I always say, well, I woke up, but I wasn't really awake, but I would get out of bed. I would say I'm choking. And uh, my husband at that time would say, uh, oh, go back to sleep. You're just having a dream because he was used to it. Yeah. And, of course, I would sometimes even start to cry and say, no, really, this time. Yeah. I have all the memory of it. Really? I remember everything. So when did this quit? This quit uh, about 30 years. I had it for over 30 years. It finally quit around uh, 1990, 1991. Do you know why? No. <laughs> No, I don't. Um, okay, well, let's get some of Mark's comments on this. Okay. Did you ever feel that when you woke up, you couldn't breathe? No, uh, I didn't feel that. It was just the panic of that I'm going to choke. I felt like I couldn't swallow. I was afraid to swallow for fear that it was going to lodge worse. Mm. That was my feeling. Okay. That it was lodged, but it was going to lodge worse. I would actually put my finger in my mouth to the back of my throat and curve it like in a hook to try and hook the object out. Mm -hmm. But of course, I never ever got it out. And then sometimes, didn't happen always, but sometimes I would go into the bathroom, turn on the light, and open my mouth to see if I could see it down my throat. So it was pretty realistic. And and all of a sudden, uh, just as if someone had hit me over the head, all of a sudden, boom, I woke up and I'd say, (laughs) 
to the nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would realize all of a sudden well, I'm not choking. It's a nightmare. Pretty interesting. But, uh, Medical condition. They were very scary. They were very scary. All right, thanks for your call. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, go ahead, Mark. You were going to say? Yep, there's a medical condition, and it's called sleep apnea. Yeah. And um, what happens in that is that the, the muscles in the throat relax when you're sleeping, and they contract a bit, so it cuts off the supply of air. And in mild cases, it can lead to dreams of choking. And as soon as you start to wake up, your body sort of kicks in back to normal, and it's gone. But in, in more severe cases, you can really be choking as you, as you sleep in. Well, and, and then as we heard that last caller, it can be very or seem very, very real. Well, it is a real medical condition. Yeah. The, the muscles in the throat relax, and they begin to constrict the flow of air. Now, I'm not saying that was her case. But it could have been because yeah. if you take a dream, uh, somebody dreaming, and you they scratch their finger or hand, the back of their hand, they can dream about somebody touching them on the back of their hand. So when that happens in a dream, the the air is being constricted. The dreamer can then start to dream about choking. But if it's a mild case, she might might uh, just be waking up and the body is kicking in and she's fine. Uh, I'm not saying it's that, but there's a possibility that it could have been that. Right. Um, rather than a simple um, outcome of something in, well, not simple, rather than an outcome of something in her, her mind, in her life, that manifested in that sort of difficult, unpleasant dream. So, and, and as unpleasant as that one was... I mean, even more curious to know why it all of a sudden, after 30 years, it quit. It could be that inside her issues have been resolved. Yeah. It could also be that that, um, that condition has eased off or gone away, if it's a medical condition. Well, it's, uh, as you said uh, once during the show today, Mark, I don't know, uh, it'll be some time before they they figure out the, the workings of the mind and the, the the mysteries and marvels uh, that uh, that are involved, but uh, I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime or not, but uh, it'll be interesting if they get to know a little bit more about it. Uh, thanks for being on our show today. Thank, thanks very much for having me. It's been very interesting, and uh, the website we'll leave at our front desk so that uh, folks can... Uh, can access it following the show and uh, you should know my guest has written uh, a book called A Course in Astral Travel and Dreams and some other publications as well and you'll be able to find out more about that on the website and Mark again thank you very much thanks Bill bye for now bye bye there's Mark Pritchard who uh, specializes in uh, dream study I know we left a lot of folks on the uh, on the phone lines this morning and we're sorry about that but uh, as you can appreciate the uh, stories that uh, our callers had to tell us were quite involved and took up perhaps a little more time than usual.